Okay, so welcome back. In this video, we are going to implement a depth buffer and do some proper depth testing. This will pretty much all be implemented in the renderer class. We can go ahead and open that up. And I'm going to troubleshoot this, so I'll just sort of take it one step at a time. Let's go down to the render function. Now in this render function, when we create the render pass, we specify a set of color attachments. Here they are. Um, we can also specify a depth stencil attachment, but there's a little bit more involved in this. So before I go ahead and do that, I want to jump into the web GPU specification and um, check a few of these objects which are involved. But I will create this. So we'll have this section here um, called depth stencil stuff. Okay. Anyway, so we'll go over and um, look up the web GPU spec. <clears throat> and I'll just search here for depth stencil attachment. Okay, we can click in there. So we have this depth stencil. There we go. GPU render pass depth stencil attachment. All right. Um, and it's a struct, basically a dictionary, which has all of these fields. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's have a Uh, attachment there, which is of type GPU render pass step stencil attachment. Okay, fine. All well and good. Um, now, if we look at this struct, we need to populate or we need to have a texture view. So we can click in there. And this texture view is created from a texture. So we're going to need a uh, depth stencil buffer, which will be of type uh, just a standard texture. And then we'll have a view into that texture. That's a GPU texture view. And um, as it turns out, we're going to also need an extra um, field. If we go down to the pipeline <clears throat> and we go right the way down, here we are. I think that's here. Uh, if we go, yeah. So we also need this uh, GPU depth stencil state also needs to be defined. So we're going to need one of those. So we'll go ahead and make that. We'll have this um, GPU depth stencil state. Now, I'm just going to reorder this. And I'm going to declare the... Well, it doesn't matter, does it? But um, just to visualize how this works. Because the depth stencil attachment references a depth stencil view, and a depth stencil view is created from a depth stencil buffer that is sort of the order that we would want to create them now as it turns out with a depth stencil state that's really just a description of of how this will work so if we go search for um depth stencil state all this is really doing is declaring how the thing will be used it, it doesn't depend on the actual texture at all so that's pretty easy to deal with. Um, but anyway, I'll make a function. Make depth buffer resources, and I'll call that as part of the initialization. So we create the assets, and then before we create the pipeline, 
we'll make those depth buffer resources. Okay, right, so just grab all of these. And these are the things we need to create roughly in this order. Okay, so as you can see, this is a dictionary, so it comes down to <clears throat> filling in the, um, the relevant fields. So we see the first field is required, that's called format. And what do we have here? Let's go depth 24 plus stencil eight, so 24 bits for the depth buffer, eight bits for the stencil buffer, which we're not gonna use, but that's fine. Um, then we have depth right enabled, I want that to be true. Uh, depth compare. I want it to be less than or equal. So we'll start off setting the depth buffer to a value of one everywhere, which is maximum depth. And then if we see a fragment which has f lesser depth, then we will write that fragment. Otherwise we'll discard it. <clears throat> And then if we look through here, all of these other ones have reasonable default values, so we can just leave those. Those are fine. So that's the depth stencil state done. Okay, now to create the um, texture, we'll need a texture descriptor. So again, we'll just check in here. Yeah, GPU texture descriptor. All right. So <clears throat> I'm going to need to get the size of the screen or really the canvas that we're working with. There are heaps of ways to do this. Here's what I'm going to do. We'll make a, um, an extent. And we'll say, okay, the width is, grab the canvas's width. And there we have it. Okay, so then in addition to that, we will need to populate this texture descriptor. So we'll say, okay. Um, okay, so we have size and we'll set that to the, the size variable up above. Then we have uh, MIP level count is one, that's fine. Sample count is one, that's fine. Texture dimension, has a default value of 2D, that's okay. Uh, texture format. And we'll go with the same one. So depth 24 plus stencil eight. I think it doesn't really matter, but I'll keep it consistent. Um, usage is a GPU texture usage um, render attachment. And then we have these view formats. So that is if we want to be able to transition it to a bunch of different formats besides the specified format, we can specify those as well. But I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm happy with this. So then we can go ahead and create this. So we can say, create a texture based on the, the descriptor there. Okay, right, so then we need to make a view. Now we can optionally throw in another um, descriptor here as well. So let's do that. Okay, so we'll just go back and we'll search for this uh, GPU texture view descriptor. It's a lot of back and forth, but most of programming is reading documentation. So none of this is strictly required. It can probably grab it from the texture it's looking at, but let's specify it anyway. So for the format, go with uh, the same as before. Uh, dimension. Aspect is basically saying, what do we want to access here? 
depth only, stencil only. Let's just go all. That's fine. And um, <clears throat> yeah, the rest of that seems reasonable. Okay, so then we can use that view descriptor when creating the view. Just make sure we're very explicit about it. But yeah, that's fine. And then Let's, let's check this. So we'll go depth stencil attachment. Okay, so this does not take a descriptor. It pretty much is a descriptor. So we are required to specify a view, which we have. And then what do we have? Uh, depth clear value. <clears throat> we'll need to set that because right now we have it at zero should be one one is the maximum depth then we want to draw things which are closer than that okay now it says here what does it say it's recommended to prefer clearing so let's go with clear as our depth load op <clears throat> and then yeah operation to perform on the views that uh, depth component after executing the render pass I guess we should store it so we'll go depth store op now this is a funny thing although these other options for the stencil buffer are not specified they are required so we need to specify a stencil load op and stencil store op and it really doesn't matter. Let's just go clear and discard because I'm not using those values, but that's fine, I guess. Alrighty, so we've created those resources. Now we can close that and go to the pipeline. Yeah, okay, so depth stands so what we are looking for here, the state. That's fine. And then we're almost ready. We can close that down, just go to the render. And then when we create the um, render pass, we'll pass in our depth stencil attachment. And that's it. Fingers crossed. So we'll just go back and uh, start that up again. Okay, and restart. Okay, so remember, before I was having an issue where I walked to the side and it wasn't, it was drawing the triangles in the wrong order, but now we can see that it is in fact drawing the triangles in the correct order. And it's not a fluke, we can reverse that. And it's drawing them in the correct order, the opposite way as well. Very cool. So that's all well and good. It's very satisfying, looks very nice. In the next installment, I'm going to make a bunch of other meshes and textures as well, and just verify that we can get a whole bunch of different meshes and textures running at the same time. Okay, hope you had fun, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.